G'day everyone, Uncle Jojo here, Blinky Bill's cousin. Today I've been asked a question by Trev. G'day Trev, this one's for you. Trev's asked me about making a pattern rafter. He's got a flat roof, or what we consider to be a skillion roof. So it's on a slight pitch of four degrees or more. Our pommy mates over in England love to call it a mono pitch. What that is, is a roof that runs in one, one direction only. Trev, for you today, that's exactly what I've got. And today we're gonna to make a pattern rafter. The most important thing to remember when doing, before you even start doing your rafters, is make sure that your walls are parallel with each other and everything's square. If everything's not square and parallel, then the pattern rafter that we do is not going to work. The measurements all need to be exact so that when we do our pattern rafter and we utilize it to cut all of our rafters, that then as soon as we go to place our rafter over the top of our wall plates, then it'll all sit Mickey Mouse. So the first thing that we do is we take our adjustable square. Some people have what we call a roofer's square, which is a triangle that has all of the different pitches on it. I'm not a big fan of that. I use my adjustable square for almost everything. It has a spirit level on it and it comes in mighty handy because I can go from uh, anything from 10 mil all the way up to a foot or 300 mil. We take our adjustable square and we put it plumb with the wall and then we make sure our level is on spot and then we plumb up. We do the same thing on the other side and we plumb up. We then measure the distance from the top plate to the bottom of our cut. That there is 16 mil. Now, to make sure that this rafter hooks on and over, we wanna make sure that our cut is a little bit deeper than the 16 mil. So this side here, we'll mark it 25 mil. And we'll also measure 25 mil up here. That means that we're exactly the same measurement from our top plate to our line. We'll get those two marks to line up. We draw our line through that. And there you can see that we've actually got our bird's mouth to sit over the top of our top plate. Now, we'll also transfer these if everything's parallel and nice and square. We'll also do the exact same procedure down the other end and cut it to fit. So here we are, we've cut out our shape that we need. You'll notice that I've gone over the top of the top plate with this. What that does is it helps lock in both ends and it ensures that the frame is locked in together with the roof and then the frame itself is locked in with the ground so nothing moves, it's all one unit. So let's sit that into place. Now that we've set that in place, you can see that is nice and flat. It sits over the plate perfectly. We could give it a little bit extra if we wanted to on the sides, but it wouldn't be much, it'd be half a blade. Now I can utilize this pattern. Both ends are correct, both ends have been checked. I can utilize this pattern and cut all of my rafters at once. Once I've cut all of my rafters, then we can do all of our measurements and all of our spacing is at a 450 center. So all of our rafters are positioned at 450 centers or less. Then from there, I'll noggin through the middle and then we'll get on to doing our batten systems, fascia board and cross bracing. On a side note, anybody that's running a mono pitch or a skillion roof at a particular angle, you can get a pitch finder, which is just basically a projector that goes onto your roof and it'll level up as you get the exact pitch that you're after. And they can go from zero all the way up to the other system that you can do is a run and rise, which is where you use your level to show the run and then you measure up to see your rise. Every degree is different, so you'll need to do some homework to figure out the run and rise system and you can get an exact pitch for the roof that you're after. So there you have it, Trev. All of the rafters are in place. Bird's mouth at both ends with the cut that actually houses over the top of both plates at both ends, making sure that everything's tied in together. We'll then also triple grip this, uh, making sure that there's no uplift as well, or we could hooping iron over the top of them. Hope that's helped you out. Any questions or queries, flick them over. I'll answer them best I can. Anybody else out there, any questions or queries, flick them over and I'll have a look at them for you. Thanks for watching and like always, till next time, stay unreal, banana peel, and I'll see you in the soup.